Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. You know, a lot of times we watch things, we watch things on TV, watch movies, we hear, we hear people's stories, and we get spooked. And we start hearing about the demonic, and we get nervous. We start hearing about witchcraft, and we get, woo, we get a little jittery. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. If you're in Christ, and Christ is in you, you have nothing to fear. If I named the different experiences I've had being attacked by the demonic, the one thing that was always true to form was I take authority in the name of Jesus, praising God, quoting the word, any and all of the above, they're gone. Because, see, you have to remember, the devil didn't make God. God made the devil. And the creator is always more powerful than the createe. So, I say that to tell you. Have faith in God. He that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm quoting word. In 2 Chronicles 7.14, it says, If my people, this is God talking to his people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. We have to remember we serve a risen Savior. God is not dead. God is not taking a nap. God is a very present help. God is faithful. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present. I'm just feeling enamored by God right now. So if you wonder what the tears are about. When you have a connection and a, a love relationship with God, you really do start to understand how tender and how sweet and how beautiful it is to be in his presence and sometimes it's emotionally overwhelming even though nothing spectacular you don't see fireworks going off in my kitchen right you don't see me looking younger by the minute you know like within an hour maybe i'll look 25 no none of that's happening but when you have a relationship with god and you get to know who he really is through reading that word. You appreciate who you have. You fall in love with him. <laughs> okay. Now let's deal with the authority that we have in Jesus Christ. I get a lot of comments and a lot of uh, calls dealing with people who get attacked at night. And that's usually when Satan attacks, when you're not looking. You know, he's the kind that'll stab you in the back, you know. He's, yeah, he, he, he's low down and dirty. And so is every power and principality that works under his rule. You cannot afford to be intimidated by him. This is where the world has it upside down, and this is sad. More people fear the devil than, the, than those that fear God. And God's the one that created the devil. That's like, 
that's like me making something and then after I make it and I give it to somebody they're afraid of the thing I made but they're not afraid of me and I'm the one who knows how to make it work or malfunction for that matter so when you know the authority you have in God you don't turn tail and run you don't sit and just watch things happen your chest starts to hurt you bind and rebuke heart attack in the name of Jesus. Take authority over your body. When I went to the hospital last year for the first time in my life, and they took me straight to ICU, the whole time I was getting ready to go to the hospital, I was binding heart attack. I was rebuking heart attack. I was binding and rebuking stroke. And guess what? None of that ever happened. None of it. I had a physical crisis. I had to deal with the fluid overload. And they had to get the fluid out. But I never had to have surgery. I never had to. I never had to go through all of that stuff. Because I was verbally taking authority over my body. Now. I'm not going to be a fool. If it's something that is an emergency situation yeah you just handle it that's why God put doctors on this on this planet but it doesn't mean we're to depend on the doctor we are to depend on the great physician when we're walking down the street and there are dogs out and there are people out and we don't know what they're up to we have the name of Jesus we have the greatest weapon they may have a gun the dog may have vicious teeth but we have the name of Jesus. And trust me, baby, that is way more powerful. Way more powerful. You bind that dog in the name of Jesus, he ain't touching you. Now, you may have a gun and you may aim and shoot. You might miss. And here he comes. But when you bind that dog in the name of Jesus, every time stops and dead in his tracks. Ask me how I know. No, you have to, you know, the, the old song, we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Listen, God is very much alive. There is resurrection power in Jesus. This is a supernatural walk, you guys. This is not religion. I don't know how I can drive that into your heads. This has nothing to do with with religion not only do i hate religion and most of you hate religion but guess what god hates religion because that's not what he's about man turns it into religion god keeps it as a relationship a bond a covenant that's not religion Oh, okay, let's see what else, what else, what else do I want to comment about real quick before I go to the next video. There was a time when I didn't have any health care, none. You know, when we have some kind of health care, we, we do tend to run to it quicker than we would if we didn't have it. So I had no other recourse but to command my heart to beat normally. My heart was bouncing all over the place for about a year. It would come and go, come and go, come and go. Every time it would come, I'd tell it to go. Every time it would come, I'd tell it to go. And, and we d did that dance for about a year until somebody told me, you probably need to take more magnesium. And I started taking magnesium and the problem ended. Now, I say all that, excuse me, to say how powerful God is, how faithful he is. I have had abscesses. I didn't have the money or the health care to go to the doctor, to go to the dentist, to have a root canal or whatever. So you know what I thought to ask God? I said, Lord. And I believe God gives us ideas to ask these questions because who would think to ask this? I said, God, can you break, bring that thing to a head like people when they have boils? 
and it comes to a head and they're able to pop it and all the stuff runs out. Can you do that with my gum? I mean, within days, I start seeing this little white protrusion. And by the third day, I was able to take a needle and pop it. Didn't even hurt. And all the stuff came out. And there went the toothache. There went the abscess. Everything was gone. And it happened again on the other side. I said the same prayer, same result. Pop it, runs out, done, over with. You know, God, <laughs> do you know how tickled pink he gets when we lean on him for every little thing? There are some people that would say, girl, God ain't got time for all that silliness. Ask him for something serious. Well, since it's the little foxes that spoil the vine, God handles the little details to be a big blessing. God isn't too big to handle small things like we prideful humans get. God is magnanimous, but he's very intuitive. He's very attentive to handle the most minuscule issues that other people might deem silly. It's important to God because it's important to us. And we're important to God. Relationship, relationship. Oh, I wish you could get how important it is to have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. I started getting impatient with my husband. Another example. Taking care of him. Getting tired of having my sleep broken night after night after night, month after month, year after year. And he came down on me one night and he called me and I got angry. I didn't let him know I got angry, but God knew I was angry. And when I got through taking care of my husband, I came back upstairs to go to bed. Guess what God did? He gave me a scripture, popped it in my head. And I said, okay, let's see what the Lord has to say. And I read it, and the sentence that jumped out at me and just ran all over me. Forsake wrath. And as soon as I read the words, do you know all that impatience and frustration was gone, just like that. God's grace is truly sufficient. Learn to lean on him. Learn to trust in him. Seek him with all your heart. Seek him about every little stupid thing in your life. Seek him. It may be stupid to you, but it's important to him. God bless you as you draw close to God and find the beauty that's in him.